Okay, guys, only because I like you am I going to do this. I know a lot of you heard about the investigation of the Baltimore City Police Department by the Department of Justice. And you heard that it's a 164-page report. Trust me, the report is 164 pages. Why am I saying that? Because I read the damn thing. All right, what I'm going to do is, for those of you who really don't have time to read the thing, I'm going to go through it. And because this thing is tedious, I'm going to read you the table of contents, and then I'm going to go bit by bit reading uh, a lot of it, but possibly not all of it. Now, I'm going to leave a link uh, on uh, the video, and in the interest of not uh, trying to kill anybody, I'm going to try to break this up into basically 20-minute segments. At the beginning of each segment, I will tell you approximately where I start, okay? Now, it may be a bit over 20 minutes, it may be a little less than 20 minutes but I'm gonna try my best to keep it at uh, 20 minutes. Okay, here we go. Obviously the report was done by the U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division, August 10, 2016. The table of contents, executive summary, background, A, Baltimore, Maryland, B, Baltimore Police Department, C, Baltimore Police Department's enforcement priorities and relationship with the Baltimore community, D, federal involvement. Number two, Baltimore Police Department engages in a pattern or practice of conduct that violates the United States Constitution and laws and conduct that raises serious concerns. Under number two, A, BPD makes unconstitutional stops, searches, and arrests. One, under A, BPD unco unconstitutional stops, searches, and arrests result in part of its zero tolerance enforcement strategy. Two. Baltimore Police Department unconstitutionally stops and searches pedestrians. Three, Baltimore Police Department, I'm going to just say BPD, makes unconstitutional arrests. Four, BPD unconstitutional stop searches and arrests result from a long-standing practice of overly aggressive street enforcement with deficient oversight and policy guidance. B, BPD discriminates against African Americans in its enforcement activities. One. BPD enforcement activities disproportionately impact Amer African Americans. Two, racial disparities in BPD's enforcement along with evidence suggesting intentional discrimination against African Americans exacerbates community distrust. C, BPD uses unreasonable force. One, BPD overly aggressive tactics unnecessarily escalate encounters and results in excessive force. Two, BPD uses unreasonable force against individuals with a mental health disability and those in crisis and fails to make reasonable modifications when interacting with individuals with mental health disabilities. Three, BPD uses unreasonable force against juveniles and ignores widely accepted strategies for police interactions with youth. Four, BPD uses unreasonable force against people who are not a threat to officers or the public. Five. BPD deficient policy, it's BPD's deficient policies, training, crisis intervention program, and lack of oversight underlie the pattern or practice of excessive force and violations of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Six, BPD's transport practices create a significant risk of harm. D, BPD unlawfully restricts protected speech. One, BPD unlawfully detains and arrests members of the public for protected speech. Two, BPD retaliates by using force against individuals who engage in protected speech. Three, concerns that BPD interferes with the right to record public police activities. E, BPD's handling of sexual assault investigations raises serious concerns of gender bias policing. One, evidence of gender bias in BPD's response to sexual assault. Two, BPD fails to adequately investigate reports of sexual assault. 
Roman numeral three. Systematic deficiencies in BPD's practices contribute to constitutional violations, erode community trust, and inhibit effective policing. A. BPD fails to adequately supervise its officers' enforcement activities. One, BPD does not provide adequate policy guidance and training to its officers. Two, BPD does not adequately supervise officers or collect and analyze data on their activities. B, BPD fails to adequately support its officers. C, BPD fails to hold officers accountable for misconduct. One, BPD lacks adequate systems to investigate complaints and impose discipline. Two, BPD's internal culture is resistant to effective discipline. D, BPD does not coordinate with other agencies appropriately. E, BPD fails to engage in effective community policing. One, the relationship between the police and the community in Baltimore is broken. Two, BPD has failed to implement community policing principles. Three, BPD recognizes that it must improve its relationship with the community it serves, but much work remains. And then finally, the conclusion. Okay, that took approximately six minutes and 30 seconds. Now let's jump into uh, the areas that uh, we need to really look at. The executive summary. Today we announce the outcome of the Department of Justice's investigation of the Baltimore City Police Department, BPD, after engaged in a, foul, a thorough investigation initiated at the request of the City of Baltimore and BPD, the Department of Justice concludes that there is reasonable cause to believe that BPD engages in a pattern or practice of conduct that violates the Constitution or federal law. BPD engages in a pattern or practice of, one, making unconstitutional stops, searches, and arrests, two, using enforcement strategies that produce severe and unjustified disparities in the rates of stops, searches, and arrests of African Americans, three, uses excessive force, and four, retali retaliating against people engaged in constitutionally protected expression. This pattern or practice is driven by systematic deficiencies in BPD's policies, training, supervision, and accountability structures that fail to equip officers with the tools they need to police effectively and within the bounds of the federal law. We recognize the challenge faced by police officers in Baltimore and other communities around the country. Every day, police officers risk their lives to uphold the law and keep our communities safe. Investigatory stops, arrests, and force, including at times deadly force, are all necessary tools used by BPD officers to do their jobs and protect the safety of themselves and others. Providing policing services in many parts of Baltimore is particularly challenging where officers regularly confront complex social problems rooted in poverty, racial segregation, and deficient educational, employment, and housing opportunities. Still, most BPD officers work hard to provide vital services to the community. The pattern or practice occurs as a result of systematic deficiencies at BPD. The agency fails to provide officers with sufficient policy guidance and training, fails to collect and analyze data regarding officers' activities, and fails to hold officers accountable for misconduct. BPD also fails to equip officers with the necessary equipment and resources they need to police safely, constitutionally, and effectively. Each of these systematic deficiencies contributes to the constitutional and statutory violations we observed. Okay, that was uh, through page four of the document. Now I'm gonna jump to page six. Unconstitutional stops, searches, and arrests. BPD's legacy of zero tolerance enforcement continues to drive its policing in certain Baltimore neighborhoods and leads to unconstitutional stop searches and arrests. Many BPD supervisors instruct officers to make frequent stops and arrests, even for minor offenses and with minimal or no suspicion. Without sufficient consideration of whether this enforcement strategy promotes public safety and community trust or conforms to constitutional standards, these instructions coupled with minimal supervision and accountability for misconduct lead to constitutional violations. Stops. 
BPD officers recorded over 300,000 pedestrian stops from January 2010 through May 2015, and the true number of BPD stops during this period is likely far higher due to underreporting. These stops are concentrated and predominantly in predominantly African American neighborhoods and often lack reasonable suspicion. Uh, does the name Freddie Gray ring a bell? BPD's pedestrian stops are concentrated on a small portion of Baltimore's residents. BT BPD made roughly 44% of its stops in two small, predominantly African American districts that contain only 11% of the city's population. Consequently, hundreds of individuals, nearly all of them African American, were stopped on at least 10 separate occasions from 2010 to 2015. Indeed, seven African American men were stopped more than 30 times during this period. BPD's stops often lack reasonable suspicion. Our review of incident reports and interviews with officers and community members found that officers regularly approach individuals standing or walking on city sidewalks to detain and question them and check for outstanding warrants despite lacking reasonable suspicion to do so. Only 3.7% of pedestrian stops resulted in officers issuing a citation or making an arrest. And as noted below, many of these arrests based upon pedestrian stops had their charges dismissed upon initial review by either supervisors at BPD central booking or local prosecutors. Searches. During stops, BPD officers frequently pat down or frisk individuals as a matter of course without identifying necessary grounds to believe that the person is armed and dangerous. And even where an initial frisk is justified, we found that officers often violate the Constitution by exceeding the frisk permissible scope. We likewise found many instances in which officers strip search individuals without legal justification. In some cases, officers perform degrading strip searches in public prior to making an arrest and without grounds to believe that the searched individuals were concealing contraband on their bodies. Okay, just so that you know, uh, stop and search does not necessarily mean stop and search. The stop sometimes, and a lot of the times, is not a constitutionally allowed stop, but even after the stop, the search is not mandatory and must be uh, accompanied with probable cause. So when they stop you and search you, uh, they must enunciate the probable cause they have to search you, otherwise it's an illegal search. But they go into that uh, later in the document. Arrests. We identified two categories of common unconstitutional arrests by BPD officers. One, officers make warrantless arrests without probable cause. And two, officers make arrests for misdemeanor offenses such as loitering or trespassing without providing the constitutionally required notice that the arrested person was engaged in unlawful activity. Arrest without probable cause from 2010 to 2015 Supervisors at Baltimore Central Booking and local prosecutors rejected over 11,000 charges made by BPD officers because they lacked probable cause or otherwise did not merit prosecution. Our review of incident reports describing warrantless arrests likewise found many examples of officers making unjustified arrests. In addition, officers extend stops without justification to search for evidence that would justify an arrest. These detentions, many of which last more than an hour, constitute unconstitutional arrests. Misdemeanor arrest without notice. BPD officers arrest individuals standing lawfully on public sidewalks for loitering, trespassing, or, or other misdemeanor offenses without providing adequate notice that the individuals were engaged in unlawful activity. Indeed, officers frequently invert the constitutional notice requirement. While the Constitution requires individuals to, re to receive pre-arrest notice of the specific conduct prohibited as loitering or trespassing, BPD officers approach off 
individuals standing lawfully on sidewalks in front of public housing complexes or private businesses and arrest them unless the individuals are able to justify their presence to the officer's satisfaction. Discrimination against African Americans. BPD's targeted policing of certain Baltimore neighborhoods with minimal oversight or accountability disproportionately harms African American residents. Racially disparate impact is present at every stage of BPD's enforcement actions from the initial decision to stop individuals on Baltimore streets to searches, arrests, and uses of force. These racial disparities, along with evidence suggesting intentional discrimination, erode the community trust that is critical to effective policing. BPD's disproportionately stops Amer African American pedestrians citywide. BPD stopped African American residents three times as often as white residents after controlling for the population of the area in which the stops occurred. In each of BPD's nine police districts, African Americans account for a greater share of BPD stops than the population living in the district. Wow. And BPD is far more likely to subject individual African Americans to multiple stops in short periods of time. In the five and a half years of data we examined, African Americans accounted for 95% of the 410 individual of the 410 individual BPD stopped at least 10 times. One African American man in his mid 50s was stopped 30 times in less than 4 years. Despite these repeated intrusions, none of the 30 stops resulted in a citation or criminal charge. BPD also stops African American drivers at disproportionate rates. African Americans account for 82% of all BPD vehicle stops compared to only 60% of the driving age population in the city and 27% of the driving age population in the greater metropolitan area. BPD disproportionately searches African Americans during stops. BPD searched African Americans more frequently during pedestrian and vehicle stops even though searches of African Americans were less likely to discover contraband. Indeed, BPD officers found contraband twice as often when searching white individuals compared to African Americans during vehicle stops and 50% more often during pedestrian stops. African Americans similarly accounted for 86% of all criminal offenses charged by BPD officers despite, despite making up only 63% of Baltimore residents. Racial disparities in BPD's arrests are most profoundly for highly discretionary offenses. African Americans account for 91% of the 1,800 people charged solely with failure to obey or trespassing. 89% of the 1,350 charges for making a false statement to a, an officer, and 84% of the 6,500 people arrested for disorderly conduct. Moreover, booking officials and prosecutors declined charges brought against African Americans at significantly higher rates than charges against people of other races, indicating that officers' standards for making arrests differ by the race of the person arrested. We also found large racial disparities in BPD's arrests for drug possession. While survey data shows that African Americans use drugs at similar rates to or slightly exceeding other population groups, BPD arrested African Americans for drug possession at five times the rate of others. BPD deployed a policing strategy that by its design led to differential enforcement in African American communities, but BPD failed to use adequate policy, training, and accountability mechanisms to prevent discrimination. Despite long-standing notice of concerns about how it polices African American communities in the city, BPD has conducted virtually no analysis of its data to ensure that its enforcement activities are non-discriminatory, and the department misclassifies or otherwise fails to investigate specific complaints of racial bias, nor has the department held officers accountable for using racial slurs or making other statements exhibiting racial bias. In some cases, BPD supervisors have ordered officers to specifically target African Americans for stops and arrests. These failures contribute to the large racial disparities in BPD's enforcement that undermines the community trust and the fairness of the police.
BPD leadership has acknowledged that this lack of trust inhibits their ability to forge important community partnerships.